Hello, friends. Hello, hello. Happy Friday. Oh, it's Friday. It's Friday. Uh, we have some friends that have popped in here. Oh, look at all you guys in the chat. Hello. Hello, Stan, Robbie, Cherie, Dawn. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's going to be a nice day. It's a nice day here in Maryland. Everybody's just kind of sharing the weather and where they're from. Hello, all. Hello. Hi, I'm Lisa Hetrick. I bet everybody kind of already knows that, but that's okay. If you're new here, welcome. I am super excited for today's live. Okay, it's a little bit different from what I've done in the past, but we're going to be talking all about abstract card design and uh, the grow through stamp set that I just had recently released with Gina K designs that has a lot of abstract images in it. So hello, people are popping in. Wow. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Deb. I'm so excited to see where everybody's popping in from. Um, I missed everyone last week um, on my live that I didn't get to have. It was my daughter's birthday, so it was a very special day. Um, super excited. So going to dive right in because I've got a lot I want to share today. Um, Cheryl just shared, oh, hazy and hot. Uh, Mary's in Western Maryland and it's 74. I'm in like Northwest Maryland. And it is beautiful here today, too. Gloria just said her set arrived today. That's exciting. Oh, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see what everybody starts creating with this set. So we're going to dive right in because my goal, if you're new here, my goal is to get um, a lesson, a tutorial shared within the hour. If you're watching this on your lunch hour or um, try to be very respectful of everyone's time. So Anat just says, good evening from Israel. Hello. I, Emma just said, first live with you. Okay, great. Okay, we're going to dive in. We're going to talk all about abstract card design today. If you have questions along the way, hi, Sue. Hi, Dawn. If you have questions along the way, pop them in the chat and I'll answer them. Today is going to be heavy on the stamping and all about abstract card design and with a little bit of a twist. And I am going to talk a bit about color. So we're gonna dive right in. I'm gonna head to the down camera and we're gonna dive right in and talk about the supplies really quickly. Now, all of the supplies are listed in the links down below in the description. Sue just asked if we had a, a, a wonderful birthday celebration with my daughter. Yes, we did last week. And last weekend, it was wonderful. So all of the links are down below in the description. The stamp set that I'm using today is the Grow Through Stamp Set with Gina K Designs. We're going to be focusing on talking about how to use the abstract images to layer and create um, some texture on our cards. And I'm going to do some really fun things with these elements. Uh, a lot inside the Misty. So we've got that stamp set that we're going to be using. I've got all of my inks and I'm getting ready to talk about because we're going to talk a bit about color. But first, here are some examples of card designs that I've done and I shared that use the abstract elements that are in the stamp set. I created this stamp set. If you, you all know, um, you've probably have heard, if you're new to the channel or if you're new to Gina K Designs, you you may not have heard me say this, but I have said this many times that the stamps, I try to design my stamps so the stamps are the star of the show. That you can really just utilize the stamps that are in the stamp set to build um, card designs without a lot of extra things like pattern papers and embellishments and things. And that's exactly what I had in mind with this stamp set. Um, I built backgrounder pieces into the stamp set, abstract backgrounders that you could use with any of your stamps in your stash or any stamps in my line. So here were a couple examples of some really easy going background um, abstracts. And with this little line here, here was one that I recently shared that just used one element um, as an abstract. 
Here is the Happy Life stamp set. So there were two stamp sets released at the same time, Happy Life and Grow Through. And I'm kind of calling these like crescent moons. Uh, sometimes I call them jelly beans. But these are the different abstract elements from that stamp set. And then here's another version of using those abstract elements with some gold foil embossing. So a couple card examples. We're going to take it another step further today. And we're going to create this card, which looks very, very similar. But I'm going to talk about layering and doing color layering from light to dark. And we're mixing cool and warm colors in this design. So there's going to be a little bit of nerdy design chatter, too. So let's just dive right in. Dive in right in. I'm going to start with, uh, I talked a little bit about the supplies. I'm going to talk more about the supplies. But again, they're all listed down below in the description. I'm using my Misty today. And I've got um, the Master Layouts die that I've used for my card base. I've got the two um, dies that are companion dies in the Grow Through stamp set. These are for the Big Honkin' Flower. And my cardstock that I'm using is the white, Gina K. White. So here's my card base. And then um, my card layer, excuse me. The Gina K. Designs Layering White cardstock. And I'm using Craft cardstock. Cut to an A2 size. So I'm keeping this very simple. You can see the supplies are very simple. Not a lot of extras. Uh, because we're focusing on stamping today. Now let's get into it. Let's talk about the color. Let's talk about colors. So I wanted to do a fall palette with this card um, and this abstract card. So I pulled some colors from the Gina K line that I'm going to be using, working from lights to darks, and then also warm and cool colors. So in my yellow palette, I have sweet corn, prickly pear, and wild dandelion. <coughs> Excuse me, wild dandelion should be no... No surprise to anyone because I'm always using wild dandelion. Prickly pear is this beautiful color that's sort of like a gold, gold green, like a gold, uh, golden greenish color. It's got some green undertones to it. It's like a yellow ochre. And the sweet corn is also another great yellow. So these two colors, sweet corn and prickly pear, are more in our warm palette of colors. And I'm using Wild Dandelion that's more of a cool color. It can skew warm depending upon what you're using it with. But this is my cool color that I'm going to be using for yellow. Now, in my fall goldeny orange kind of tones, I'm using Sweet Mango, Tomato Soup, and Red Velvet. Now, Sweet Mango... And tomato, tomato soup is straight up a warm color. Sweet mango can go either way. It could be cool or it could be warm. And it really does depend on what you pair it with. So it's kind of funny how color works like that. Red velvet, same, 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 same. Red velvet is more of like our traditional Christmassy like red. But... It can skew warm or cool. And because I'm using it with a lot of warm colors, you're going to see in the final card design how it's really feeling like a warm color. Now, these three colors are newer to the Gina K line. The light spruce, medium spruce, and dark spruce. I am digging these colors. I actually have to order the big ones because I'm loving them so much. Um, and they're being used by a lot of different designers and for creating that light, medium, and dark tones within your um, stencil images. But what I really, really love about them is that they are like a blue-green, like a sage color. So they can skew warm and cool and in today's design they're going to help ground the card with some coolness um cool like cool colorness that are just going to make this a really super fun fall palette so i kind of went super nerdy here on colors but 
I think it might be really helpful to you. And you can drop a little comment in the chat if you're finding this helpful. Understanding like you got all these colors in your stash. How do you pull them together with either warms, cools, or individuals, warm, cool, or a mixture of both to create a design composition, a, a card layout that's pleasing to the eye. So I love red velvet. I absolutely love red velvet. Um, I was super excited when I started playing with my colors to kind of get that out today. Okay, now I am going to pop that right out. Gloria said it was very, very helpful. Those are the colors that I'm using today. And again, they're listed down below. Now we're going to dive right in to me using the Misty, which could be a hit or miss because sometimes I make a hot mess with the Misty. So I am using the Misty for my abstract stamps. Now I have cut my card, uh, my card layout piece with the master layouts die. Okay. So this master layouts die cuts it to 3.75 by five to fit really nicely on high Irma on the card front. And it gives us that nice little like quarter inch border around. So I'm going to start by using the Misty. I've got this piece of paper here and I'm going to tell you why, because I have a tendency to stamp my color onto this the little mat that comes in here and this is like a foamy mat and then I get the color everywhere so I tend I've been putting this piece of white paper in because it's really helping me um, <laughs> keep all the extra misty color off my hands now we're going to start in the upper left hand corner I mean the upper right hand corner so I'm lot I'm just kind of getting my piece of cardstock lodged down here in the center. And I don't need to use the magnet for this because I know that I'm just gonna keep that in that very far corner there, lower corner. And I'm gonna start, we're gonna use the abstract stamps and we're gonna do a double layer so that we get that look and feel of the abstracts but layered. So it, and it gives it a really nice extra texture and dimension without the height in the card, but you got a lot of really fun things going on here. So I'm going to start with a warm and a cool. Now these, this is the stamp I'm going to use first. And I'm intentionally, now you could line it right up to the edge if you want, but I'm intentionally lining it up off the edge of the paper. So you can see that there's a little bit of a, a, a rim there. So <laughs> you are brave not to use the magnet. So you're making me a little scared. Maybe I should use the magnet. I am, I, I do get kind of like, let's just make sure we're down in that corner. I'm going to just stick that little magnet now because I'm a little scared. <laughs> All right, we're going to work light to dark. So I'm going to be using these two colors. So I've got sweet corn and wild dandelion and I'm mixing a warm with a cool. So the warm color is going to be on the bottom and the cool color is going to go over top. Now the beautiful thing about layering the Gina K Designs inks is that they are transparent. So sometimes, depending upon what colors you're using, the color from underneath will show through the top, but not in this case because I'm working light to dark. So I'm gonna start off I'm going to close my misty door gently and lift it up. Oh, let's just make sure that stamp fit there. So see how it moved? I'm going to stick it back down in that corner, get that magnet going. And I'm going to go ahead and ink up. I, could, I should have probably used my smaller misty, um, but that's okay. I'm going to ink up the abstract with the sweet corn. And I'm just, I'm giving it a quick swipe. I shouldn't have done that, but I'm giving it a quick swipe because I saw something on there that it looked like it was a little boogery spot. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp this down. Now I don't have the tool or the 
Chucky tool or the thing that people use with their misties. I just kind of go, I just kind of free wheel it. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and hit this again. So I'm going to stamp this down again to get a nice, clean impression with, there is a piece, it's a piece of fuzz. We got a piece of fuzz on there. <laughs> you can see how it showed up right there. I love live TV. All right, a little bit of sweet corn. Inking that up. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp that down again. And I'm just kind of giving this some pressure. I don't, I don't feel like I got to really push against this. Sue just said, I got, I just got an air hockey puck from Amazon. What a great idea to, to use to push up against it. So now I've got that really nice impression with the wavy line from the abstract. So digging it, digging it, digging it. Now I'm going to go in again with this stamp, but I'm going to reposition it, making sure my paper is really down there in that corner and not moving. I'm going to take the stamp and reposition it, it and push it up a little bit. So more of the stamp is falling off of the edge, but we're going to get that two-tone look with the two colors. Digging it. Okay. Pop that up, being gentle. I'm being really gentle on this um, live. I usually don't stamp this gently. I'm gonna go ahead and ink up this, um, the abstract again with the wild dandelion. I'm gonna maybe have to get one of those air hockey pucks things. Um, give that a go. Okay, I'm gonna stamp this down and I'm gonna do this twice. So we've got, we can see when I do it once, I'm going to bring this up and I trust myself to get this right. You can see some of the sweet corn popping through the wild dandelion. That's because these colors are very transparent and they're going to pop through. They're very much like watercolor uh, in that way. All right, I'm going to put this down here again. I'm going to ink this up again and we're going to hit this twice. Oh, look at that. Clean that up. We're going to hit this twice. I love how everybody is sharing their favorite tools, the Debbie tool, the Chucky tool, um, what they use. I love how everybody's sharing that. Okay, I'm going to stamp that down again, and I'm going to get this double layer. This double layer. Oh, I love it. Okay, so look at that. Look at that layering. So you could do it again. Like if I wanted to, actually I'm thinking about doing it. I could do it again if I wanted to layer another color. I could do it again and add another color in there and just keep using this off of the edge to create the that color and that pattern. Digging it, but I'm not going to do it because I have it in my head how I would probably take one of the oranges and pop it over top of that yellow, but I'm loving it. So you could, um, yep. Like the change. Cheryl just said, I love, she likes the change of colors with just two inks, just two inks. And we've got a warm underneath here and then a cool like over top. Like how cool is that? Okay. Now I'm going to move to this bottom corner, but I've got, I'm going to flip my entire layout. My entire card, and again, focus down on that corner. I'm putting my magnet in because Sue's got me thinking about it, and I'm a little worried that I'm going to booger this up. <laughs> so I'm going to put my magnet down, but I am nesting this in that corner and just kind of keeping that there. You know, I, I wonder if anybody else out there who has the Misty can relate. I had like six of these bar magnets, six or seven of them, and I literally can't find any of them now but one. So I don't know what happened. They're probably sticking to something else, but I have yet to find them all. So happens all the time. Now I'm going to work with this corner 
and oh no wait a minute I have to think about this I have to think about this for a second because I want the stamp I want it to be this corner so it's my opposite corner sorry about that so I've got to move this over a little bit and then my magnet is definitely going to play a huge role in this working well because it's in the same corner so we're working in this corner and I'm going to work on this corner so I'm going to do the same thing with the larger piece and my um, stamp is just a little stained from using a pretty pink color so I'm just going to have a little bit hanging off the edge here and then I'm going to lift this up I'm going to nudge this back down this could get risky I think we're going to be fine. I think we're going to be fine. Now I'm going to work with the light spruce and the dark spruce instead of the medium. Now the medium is going to come into play in the design, but I want to be um, for this. I want to go light to dark. So I'm going to start in with the light. Oh, you know what? I'm going to make a little mark here. I'm a little worried now. I'm going to make a little mark with my pen that I'm lining up because I've got my magnet here but I'm lining that up on the one just in case it's shimmies okay I'm gonna go ahead and be inking this up with the light spruce now this is this light spruce is a really nice color but it is indeed light so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that down with my misty lift it up oh I love it I'm going to hit it again. I'm lining up, making sure my magnet's all in place. I'm just going to add another layer of that color, that light spruce color. Oh, I just love this color. My little sound effects. Okay, so I've got that down, that light spruce. The other thing with the um, Gina K Designs paper is that when it looks like when it f might feel like you don't have a good solid happening with your stamp but give it time to dry because when it dries it looks this this kind of shimmied off my one it looks amazing and it just kind of the color dries into the fibers of the paper and then it just looks amazing okay I'm gonna clean off this stamp and gives you more of a solid that might be more of what you're expecting to see okay I'm gonna take this stamp and do the same thing I did for the corner down here I'm gonna back this off a little bit I'm gonna back it off quite a bit and I'm just following my my squiggly here back this off close my door lift up watch what I did because I moved off that one just a smidge and now I'm gonna come in yes <laughs> Cherie I was looking for the route couldn't get the word right it smooths it out okay I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up with the dark spruce we might only need to hit hit this once but let's just go ahead I love this dark spruce color it's like you can smell the pine needles when you stamp it wouldn't that be fun to have inks that was like that are like scratch and sniff right that have smells I'm sure there are inks out there that that do that but oh I'm gonna leave that be I don't think I'm gonna hit that again look at that mm. look at those two colors together now if you wanted to do light medium and dark spruce all in one you could do that and get that wavy kind of look and feel that abstract look okay now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna line my cardstock back up with that one put my magnet down and we're gonna work on this corner up here now this stamp let's let's pull the stamp in here Woohoo! this abstract I have built in the flower line art image to the solid so the solid has a little bit of when it stamps it doesn't stamp completely solid it stamps with that image in it 
And that's just a little something extra I like to do. So I'm only going to stamp this one once. And I'm going to pull it. You can see I'm pulling it off the edge just a little bit. It is going to intersect with the design that's happening over here. Um, Cheryl just said, like the kids send in marker. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That's what I was thinking. Okay, and I am going to use to make, oops, look at me. Look at me. I'm a goober. I had the other stamp still sitting on the Misty. So I messed that up. Let's give this a go. Let's do this again. Okay, I've got this lined up with my one. Oops, let's just make sure we're good here. And then I'm going to pop this back down. Okay, close my door, pick it back up. Now I'm going to use, nope, that's red velvet, tomato soup. So I'm using the warmer orange out of the three here for this upper left corner. And it's going to be a nice contrast, nice companion in contrast to our cool yellow and our warm yellow with sweet corn. So I'm going to ink this up. And another thing I like about this tomato soup is that it, it comes, it inks up really shaking the camera a little bit. Sorry about that. It inks up really solid. It's just a nice, nice, juicy orange. Super juicy. Okay, stamp this down. And I'm going to be able to get this in one shot, I think. Let's just go ahead and give this a little pressure. Um, Susie just said, this layered colored stamping is a game changer. Yeah, it is. How fun is that? Okay. Ah, oh, look at that tomato soup color. And look at the lines from the flower just popping right out of it. I love this. I am so in love with this. This base is virtually done. Now we're going to add some more layers to it. Okay. Let's take this stamp out. Boom. I'm going to move the Misty out of the way. I'll kind of come in. Let's see. Maybe we'll zoom in just a smidge more here. So we're really getting in here. I am loving. I got to bring this up. I'm loving these colors. Look at that. So we just did all this. Created this texture and background. And it's one layer. But it's already got a lot of character going on in the card. It's already got a lot of fun stuff happening here. Okay, I'm going to bring in, let's move this to side. I'm going to bring in my stamps, my flowers. I've got the line art and I have the, uh, the line art and the solid for the flower. And I'm going to do this in two different colors. So I've got red velvet and sweet mango. So again, I'm working light to dark to get that extra uh, pop of color and texture and dimension. And I'm going to be cutting this out with one of the dies. I'm going to talk a little bit about that too. So I'm going to start first with the solid. Now, these two stamps work together. You could stamp this down, stamp this right over top, and it'll fit perfectly for a two-step stamping option. But I'm not going to do that today because we're going to, we're just being a little extra wonky today. I'm going to do something different. So I'm inking up this stamp with red velvet. Now I'm going to let everybody know I love red velvet, but it will stain your stamps if you don't, you know, clean them well, like I don't clean them well, but it will stain your stamps because it is a beautiful, beautiful, juicy, juicy red. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that down. Give it a little pressure. I could have used my Misty, but I'm not really worried about it because look at that solid. Now I'll go ahead and wipe this pretty quickly. And it's going to get off. Most of that color that was there was from a hot pink that I used. Now that is a really nice impression. If you wanted to use your Misty, Misty to get it look a little more intense, you totally could. But I just love this red color. Look at how beautiful that red velvet is. It's so 
warm and just striking. It's just an amazing red. Okay, now I'm going to take my line art image and ink it up with sweet mango. Do I want to use sweet mango? Oh, you know what? I did the wrong thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I did the exact opposite of what I said I was going to do. Working light to dark. So let's save that baby for later. Also, I wanted to point out, this is a Cosmo flower when I drew it. But if you stamped it in red velvet, it could easily look like a poinsettia. So, love it. All right, I'm going to bring in another piece of paper because I boogered this up. So let's go back to our solid image and ink this up with sweet mango. I wanted my solid image to be lighter, not darker, Lisa, lighter. So, okay, been inking this up. Let's get that in here with the sweet mango. And now my line art image is going to be with the red velvet. Light to dark. So the red velvet line art is also going to provide, it's also our embellishment So for the card. So it's gonna provide extra dimension and extra pop of color. Now, if you want to do the two-step stamping for this, you would layer this right over top and you can see I'm layering it right over top and it would be a perfect two-step stamping. But look at what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn it just a little bit and be wonky so that it has even more texture. You can see the color layer underneath it and then the line art layer on top. And I like to do this. It's, it creates a little extra something for the embellishment, makes it a little bit more wonky looking. I did it on this card with the two pinks, the carnation pinks. I just love the way that came out. Okay, now for the dies. The two dies in the stamp set, and I talked about this in the last, um, the last live or in the introduction uh, video. So <laughs> Catherine says I love wonky. Okay, so there are two dies. One in this in the two companion dies that you have options for one of them is a little closer and tighter and works really well with the silhouette the solid and one works really well with the line art so the catch for this the little trick for this is i could use the one for the line art and cut this and then i would get a little bit of a lip you know, a edge around my die cut, or I can use the die that I intended for the silhouette version of the image, and I can get a closer cut. You have options. So in my stamp line with Gina K in the dies, you'll see this. I do this often with my flowers, I give you the two different sizes so that you have options for when you run them through your die cutter, and I've run this through the die cutter, you get that close up. You're closer to the edge and you don't have as much of a lip. So here's our little die. Ah, I love it. Here's our little die cut piece. Um, just loving that. So you have options. You can have the die cut with a little bit more around the edges, or you can come in and be really tight with it. Or if you're using these stamps individually, you have the two dies for them to use them individually. So super easy. All right, now we are just trucking along here. I'm gonna bring in my card base and I'm going to get this layer down on the card base because we're gonna start building up and super, super simple. This card is coming together so fast. That's how easy that
that abstract technique is. And I hope you're visualizing it and seeing how those abstract elements can just be like, they're just universal. They can, ooh, got some glue on me. They can be used with so many different stamps in your line, in your stash, to create these fun backgrounds. And I'm actually gonna do another one. We're, get, we're probably gonna have some time, so I'm gonna bring in, probably bring in some paper and try to do a triple layer and so that everybody can kind of see what that looks like. So, But let's go ahead and finish up this card. I am digging this. I am loving this. Loving these fall colors. Loving the way this looks, so let's keep building. So now I'm gonna bring back in sweet corn. Um, Crafty Maker just asked me, what is your favorite glue? So my favorite glue is this Gina K Designs Connect glue. And the reason why is, um, and I talked about this, I think in my last video, my last live. I used to be a tape runner girl all the tape runners, all the different kinds of tape runners. But I found that I would just be like zip, 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 using so much tape that it was just crazy. And it was all the plastic and all the, just the expense of it. So I started using this wet glue because it dries clear and it also gives me a little time to shimmy my card base and it doesn't bubble. It doesn't bubble or buckle. So, Love this. This is kind of my favorite. And because I'm like gloopy with the glue, um, it's just really easy going for me. So I was a convert really probably about seven years ago to the wet glues and I'm just loving them. Okay. So I'm going to use sweet corn and I'm going to bring in the medium spruce. These two colors and I'm going to, let's see, we're going to work with, does it dry matte? Vicki just asked, does it dry matte? Yep, it dries matte, it dries clear, and it is, um, it doesn't buckle the paper. Like some wet glues will kind of make it buckly, or you'll see little, little pools of pilly stuff. That doesn't happen. So, all right, Lisa, Sue just said, Lisa, I would love to see this technique done with the moon shape from the happy life. Yeah, okay. Me too. So we'll do that. We'll do that. So, um, okay. Now I'm going in with the solid uh, image of the flower. And we're going to use this to add another layer. So I've got my embellishment. I'm just going to lay that here. I want to put my yellow layer here of the stamp and my medium spruce like right around here. So I'm just going to eyeball it. We're eyeballing and I'm going to go ahead and ink up that beautiful flower. I'm just kind of eyeball it right here. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's close this up. Now, the reason why I put it up here is so that I had created the relationship of that sweet corn with sweet corn and wild dandelion. I could put it down here and just kind of, it would still have a nice relationship between the tomato soup and the spruce colors, but I kind of just wanted to bring the little baby up close to its mama and just stick it right there. So I'm going to go in now with the medium spruce and ink up my flower. Oy, I'm getting color everywhere. Just ink up my flower here, even pop down. I'm just gonna give this a little quarter turn and just kinda, um, let's see, pop this up a little closer here. Just kinda pop that right there, loving that. So this was the medium spruce color and I said that we were going to use it because I used that light spruce and the dark spruce light spruce dark spruce and now we've got that medium that is down here this little baby is down here with its mama and its papa and we've got some nice contrast here but also like some really really beautiful colors all working together and those 
new colors that Gina K has been bringing out. The light spruce, medium spruce, dark spruce, the carnation, the violets. These are just really great no-brainer ways to do light, medium, and dark. But I am obsessed with these um, spruce colors. Maybe because I literally use them and I feel like I smell pine. I know that's not possible, but, but I do. Okay, so I've got this embellishment. I'm going to put this here, but we're not done with our abstract. I've got a couple things. One more thing that I want to do. Two more things. So here is what, for lack of a better word, in the stamp, in the stamp set, here's the squiggly lines. And I intentionally put them in this set to add another layer of abstract feel for it, but and also just add a little touch of whimsy to it. So I'm bringing in pr prickly pear. This is that gold, uh, like gold, like golden ochre color that I'm kind of call, I call it the green gold. Um, and in watercolor, I absolutely love green golds. So we haven't used prickly pear anywhere on the card yet, but I'm gonna use it right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up, my little squiggly. And I'm going to start down here because I want, we're gonna get prickly pear going off the edges of our card base. But I'm noodling around this a little bit because I don't wanna cover up my, I don't wanna go into that part of the design. So you can see I'm just kind of turning this because I wanna get it here and here. I'm just kind of being whimsical about where I'm going to put it. So I'm just going to go this way and just commit. I've committed. Now, this, if I don't wipe it up now, I'm going to get it on something. And the squiggly line just kind of is a nice little uh, contrast and accent piece to the other squiggles that we have going on in here. But this prickly pear is kind of, it's so gold. It's really showing up kind of gold-like with these other colors. And I love that it's breaking the shape here and coming off the edge of the card. So another little nerdy design thing. Now, I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to do it up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink this up. Do, 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 do. And this time it's going to go into my tomato soup a little bit. Mm, I don't really like that. Let's see. I'm just kind of noodling around here. And I want it to go into my, my yellows up here. So I'm digging this. I'm going to commit. Commit! And I'm just going to stamp it down. Oh, I love it. I love this set so much. I am like, you're going to be seeing me using these abstracts over and over and over again through the holiday season because I think they have so much potential for your card making projects. Now we've got one more finished thing I want to do here. I've got the center stamp. This is the center for the big honkin' flower. And I'm going to go in with some, is that my red velvet? Yep, I'm going to go in with my red velvet. I have a little story while I'm stamping this. Friends, my vacuum cleaner this is random, it's finally biting the dust and it's about 18 years old and it's a Dyson. So I'm gonna stamp that down right there. I ordered a new Dyson and it's coming today. And can I just say that I'm at the stage in my life that I get really excited about a purchase like that. Oops, motorcycle. That you get really excited that a, mo that a, um, that a vacuum is coming today and you can't wait to open it. How fun is that? How fun is that? Okay, so dropped that red velvet right there in the center. It adds, that red velvet is sitting on top of that tomato soup color. It adds a lot of extra texture there. Look at the prickly pear layering over top of the wild dandelion and then over the tomato soup. How fun is that? Hope, maybe you've never thought about layering your colors this way and layering your stamps this way.
But look at all of this dimension, this perceived dimension that we've got here in the card now. Love it. Okay. Now I'm going to pop my embellishment down. I'm going to take a little piece of tape. I'm going to just take... <laughs> Robbie just said vacuums are just so exciting. Fresh lines. I love them. I know. I'm a little obsessed about this vacuum. I know it shouldn't be, but I'm just kind of excited. I mean, I've had this. My other vacuum is just on its way out, and I've had it for 18 years. So I'm thinking I got it had a good life. It had a really, really good life. Okay, I'm going to just kind of flip this around to see where I want, because I've got a little bit of white going on in this embellishment. I'm just trying to see where I want it to be and I think I want it to be here I don't want to cover up my little squigglies but I am committing I committed to popping it down and I'm loving it loving this so much all right I've got a little bit of Nuvo drops here it's called copper penny I'm just going to make sure it's working now you could use any kind of embellishment but I'm just going to pop in some of this copper penny because it's a nice warm fall like one two three oops oops got a little extra i didn't mean for it together one two th two three four five six seven i always think about odd numbers just kind of randomly pop those little embellishments down all right i'm digging it i am loving the way this card came out holy smokes look at the layers i'm going to bring up the layers the wild dandelion and the um, sweet corn layer loving that look at where the two meet look how crisp that is and then the spruce and look at the card virtually no height but look at all of the texture and dimension that we built into that card design love it okay now we have a little bit of time so I am going to bring the Misty back in and let's do this abstract layer and try to do it in three. So I'm going to take this piece of paper, piece of cardstock we have here. I'm going to nest this down in here and I'm actually just doing it on the back of my flub that I did with the red velvet. Okay, we're going to take this corner piece and I'm going to nest the three colors. Let's do prickly pear, sweet corn, and wild dandelion and see what that looks like layered three times. Just so that you have this idea. So when this, if you're getting the stamp set, if it's arrived, you have you know that you can create multiple, multiple layers. So let's do it. We're gonna go in with it. We're gonna work light to dark. Okay. I'm gonna start with the sweet corn. Just gonna go ahead and ink that up. Do, 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 do. And then just stamp that down. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm gonna stamp that down one more time. You could just do one layer because you're layering this color so much. So if you don't have the Misty, you know you could just use your blocks. Stamp this down once, and because you're layering multiple colors over top, you're never gonna know. But I'm just shooting for a little bit more of a deeper solid there. Okay, so sweet corn, down. Now, I'm gonna come in with the wild dandelion and repeat what we did with that layer come in drop this i almost made a mistake there friends i forgot to move the stamp so let's go ahead and move it so that we get just move a little bit more of it off of the page close the door do it again Okay, let's go ahead and ink up my wild dandelion. So on the next live, I'll have to brief everybody on, on the vacuum, on my adventures in vacuuming. <laughs> I know it's silly. 
Believe me, I know it's silly. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to add another layer of that color. Well, dandelion, just to get a nice solid there. Oh, okay. Now let's go in. We're going in with prickly pear, our golden green, and we're going to add another layer. I'm going to back this out even more. Now, abstract designs, if you've been out like shopping at all or in the stores or looked at wall art and things like that, abstracts are showing up everywhere, um, which makes it kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> makes it kind of fun to just kind of see those kinds of things out there. They're showing up everywhere, and now you can replicate the look and feel of the things that you see out in the world with your stamps. And the interesting thing about it is that the illustrator team for Gina K, we work really far ahead with our illustrations. So we have to turn things in six months in advance. So I was thinking about these abstracts well over six months ago, well over six months ago when I turned it in. Oh, let's look at this. And it's kind of fun to see that it's kind of popping up in stores as a little bit of a trend right now. So really fun to see. So look at that layering. So you get, can you imagine, like look at that in a corner, any corner, top, bottom, but because you're backing that stamp out, you're getting different variations of the wave and it looks like three different stamps. So there you go. Like, how fun is that? Oh my gosh. And those three colors, sweet corn, wild dandelion, and prickly pear. Loving that. Loving the way that looks. Ah, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move this out. Move this out. Here are the two cards. This was the inspiration. And here was the final card. Loving the way this looks. I'm so excited about this. Now I could put a sentiment on the front, but um, I'm not going to. I'll probably put the sentiment on the inside. I have a friend that's closing on a house today. If you watch my live like three lives ago, she called me during one of the lives and it popped up on the screen. She's closing on her house today. So I think I'm going to give her this card as a congratulations. So yeah, digging it. Okay. I'm going to pop to the front camera. Wow, how exciting. I'm super excited the way these cards turned, this card turned out today. I hope that it gives you kind of a sense of where I was going with the layering stamps and that you can visualize and kind of see how you're gonna use them with any of the stamps in your stash or with a set or with the Happy Life set because they are meant to work together. So. The jelly bean like abstracts can also do this same effect. You can create the same technique using those stamps too. So um, don't just ask, where do you get the copper penny embellishment? So this, these, I'm showing you on the down camera. Can't you see? These are Nouveau drops. I'm pretty sure I put the link down below in the description. If it's not there, um, I'll, I'll make sure I add it so you can get them at, you know, scrapbook.com, like all the different or your local scrapbook store. I happen to buy these from my local scrapbook store, Photo Scraps here in um, Sykesville, Maryland. So because she carries the entire line and I've had this bottle forever. It's not something that you're going to use up really quickly. So I'm loving them. Susie shared that the color combo reminds me of my parents living. Ha! <laughs> yes. My parents living room in the 1970s mine too like that avocado think about like when avocado was popular now it's coming back as a really popular color that's why i think i'm attracted to those um spruce colors so much because they have a little bit of that uh, sage like feel to it um thelma shared that she loves abstracts i do too I hope that you found this really fun technique really really super fun technique today um, 
I just love, I'm, you can tell I'm just so excited to share it with you. Now, two more things before we go. And I hold to my time frame with you all today. First, thank you. I'm so grateful you could join me today. It's never lost on me that you are taking the time to be with me today and allowing me to come into your space and sharing um, this tutorial with you. Um, Wendy just said, I must admit, I didn't understand the abstracts until I saw Mindy Egan's designs. So that's great. Mindy did a really great job of using the abstracts as borders too. So, and I know in my last live, um, someone, I think it was Dawn, someone asked me to demonstrate it. So I did demonstrate it in my video, went for the launch video, but sometimes we really kind of just need to see it like I did today in a tutorial. So I hope it was really helpful. The second thing is, um, I have been sharing all of my cards and all of the ideas out in social media and in the Gina K Designs group. Now, I know that everybody doesn't always see the cards or see the inspiration because A, it depends on if you're on social media. Um, also, social media has a tendency not to show us the things that we love. So if you're not seeing them there and you are very much interested in hearing from me and getting information from me or seeing things from me, I would encourage you to join my email list. The link is in the description. I do share a lot in my email list. I also share when I'm going live and you'll never miss anything. I also share freebies, a lot of freebies and discounts to my online shops and my classroom. So if you find that is useful for you, I would love you to join my email list community. So Catherine, I'm going to answer a couple more questions. We have a couple minutes. Catherine just asked, can you use alcohol to clean stains off of the photopolymer stamps? I get some pink residue. You know what? I don't have a good answer for that because I've never personally done that. Maybe someone in the chat might be able to answer that. But um, I usually just leave it stained. But I know that that sometimes bothers people but it doesn't affect your next impression with the stamp. So hopefully that's helpful. I would hesitate to use alcohol or any kind of uh, medium like that because I'd be afraid of what it might do to the photopolymer. Like, does it erode it? Does it change it? And I don't, I, that would be my hesitation or anything like Gamsol or astringent like that so thank you sue for the sweet comments you are a joy to watch i hope so i get i know that like i have a plan when i come live but then i get really excited and then a lot of stuff starts to happen um gloria just shared gina's stamp cleaner works wonders so yeah gina has a stamp cleaner i don't have it but it sounds like that takes off any kind of residue and you can restore and get back to um, that clear color that you might be looking for. So Dawn says she rinses hers really well and Catherine has the same concern. So Dawn dish soap, Mary sharing Dawn dish soap. I can confirm I've used Dawn dish soap and sometimes my stamps, like these abstracts are starting to get a little bit um, like the crunchy. I'll just say crunchy, like they've got some residue on them. I will throw all of these stamps in a, a little bowl of hot water and Dawn dish soap and just kind of give them a little bath. And that really does work. So I can confirm that that works. So, okay, friends. So I will be back next Friday. That's the 16th. And I haven't figured out what I'm going to do yet. So if there's something that you've been wanting to learn, feel free to drop it in the comments. Um, either in the chat or in the comments after the live and I'll work it in to my tutorial next week. So um, I hope you're having, I hope you're having a great day and I hope you have a fantastic weekend and that this tutorial today sends you into the weekend to craft your joy. And um, I'm really excited to see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me and have a great weekend. I'll see you next time, friends.